Today we'll implement the contract gem join. In MakerDAO language, gem usually refers to collaterals. The gem join contract is responsible for locking in and freeing up user's collateral. So when a user locks up collateral, the collateral will be locked in this gem join contract. And when the user frees up the collateral, the collateral will be sent from this gem join contract back to the user. When the user's collateral is locked inside the gem join contract, the gem join contract will call into the back contract and record that this user's collateral has been locked into the DAI stablecoin system. And when the user frees up the collateral, again the gem join contract will call into the back contract to update the collateral balance and then afterwards send the collateral back to the user. To begin with, I'll initialize a project using Foundry. Forge init inside this directory. This will initiate a Foundry project with some boilerplate codes. We won't need the script folder, so I'll remove this. Inside the source, I'll also remove the counter contract. And inside the test, I'll remove the counter test contract. Next, I'm going to create some folders inside the source. I'll create div, also create interfaces. And I'll create another folder called stablecoin. And inside the stablecoin contract, we'll create a file called gemjoin. gemjoin.sol. Next, from the DSS repo, I'll copy the code for gemjoin. The contract for the gem join is called join.sol, so I'll click on this, and then I'll copy this file. Back inside my terminal, I'll open the gem join contract, and then paste the code that we just copied over from the DSS repo. Now inside this code, there's a contract for gem join and another contract called die join. In this video, we won't cover die join. This will be a topic for another video, so I'll delete this, and then change the compiler version to 0.8.24. Next, let's rename the interfaces. Gem-like, I'll name this as iGem. Basically, iGem is a ERC20 token, and in most cases, it will be used as a collateral. It will have the function decimals, transfer, and transfer from. DS token-like is the interface for DAI stablecoin. Since we removed DAI join, we're not going to need this interface in this video. And bat-like, this will be the interface for the back contract. I'll name this iCDP engine. As a reminder, CDP means collateralized debt position. And basically it means you need to lock your collateral before you can borrow DAI. For the gem join contract, we won't need to call the function move, so we'll also remove this for now. Okay, next I'm gonna remove the comments. Okay, and we now have our gem join contract. Now inside the MakerDAO contracts, you'll see this code often copy and paste it all throughout different contracts. And what this basically does is it's an authorization. Wards is a mapping for addresses that are authorized. If the address is set to 1, then this means that this address is authorized to make some function calls that are only allowed by the authorized addresses. Otherwise, this address will have a value of 0, and it means that it is not authorized. There are two functions, rely and deny. Rely to add as authorization, and deny to remove authorization. So first, let's rename these variables and the function. Starting with words, I'll rename this as authorized, and I'll do the same for all of the words. Next, I'll rename this function rely to grant alt, and the function deny to deny alt. And we also have a modifier called alt. This modifier checks that message sender is authorized, otherwise it throws an error saying not authorized. Let's change this message to say not authorized. One last thing I'll do is change the mapping from uint to boolean. Now using uint might save guess, but the reason why I'm changing it to boolean is for clarity. And then we can change this to true and change this to false. So we have some basic codes for authorization. Lastly, I'll move this alt modifier to over here in between the mapping authorized and the function grant alt. So now we have the mapping from address to boolean called authorized. We have a modifier that checks that message sender is authorized. I'll remove this one since we're now storing a boolean. And then we have two functions, grant authorize, grant alt, and deny alt. And both functions require the message sender to be authorized. Let's also change the event that is emitted. Let's call this grant authorize authorization and I'll do the same for the event that is declared over here grant authorization and then going back up let's change deny to deny authorization 
and I'll do the same over here. I'll take these two events and then put it up here. Next, I'll create another contract called contract alt and then stick all of this code into here. So now you'll be able to use this alt contract and then say gem join is alt. Now inside the constructor, we see that message sender is authorized. So let's take this code and then stick it inside our alt contract. So I'll create a constructor here and then inside it, paste it, rename this to authorized and set it equal to true. So now we have authorization for the gem join contract and we'll be able to reuse this alt contract for other contracts in the MakerDAO system. Next, let's start by renaming the state variables. Bat like, we'll rename this to I CVP engine. And we'll rename bat as CVP engine. Next is a state variable called ILK. Inside the MakerDAO stablecoin system, we have several options for the collateral to lock. For example, we can lock ETH and there are other ERC20 tokens that we can use as collateral. And this collateral is identified by this bytes32, usually named ILK. So let's rename this ILK to, let's call it collateral type. Collateral type, and then I'll do the same for all occurrence of ILK. Next, we'll rename gem like to I gem. Inside the gem join contract, this gem refers to the collateral that we're gonna be locking inside this contract. Okay, the next state variable is called deck. If you look at the code over here, inside the constructor, it calls decimals on gem. And gem is usually a ERC20 token, so this decimal refers to the decimal of a ERC20 token. So let's rename this deck to decimals. And instead of uint, we can also make this into uint8. And the last state variable inside this contract is called live. This indicates whether this contract can be called or not. Inside the constructor, the live is set to 1. And there's another function called cage, which will set live equal to 0. And there are other parts of the code that checks that this live is equal to 1, meaning that this contract is still alive. This code is repeated in a lot of parts of the MakerDAO contracts. Let's create another contract and then we'll use some of these functionalities. So I'll create a contract. Let's call this circuit breaker. And it'll have a single variable. It'll be uint public live. I'll change uint to boolean since I think it's easier to understand. Next, we will create an internal function for this. So I'll create an internal function called stop this will be internal and what it does is it's going to set live to false. So inside the constructor, we'll set live to true. And then over here, instead of calling this function cage, I'll call this stop and it has an authorization modifier. So only authorized accounts will be able to stop this contract. And inside here, we'll call the internal function stop and this contract will inherit from the circuit breaker that we just wrote above. And then I'll also remove this state variable. Next, there are places inside this code that checks that live is equal to true. So I'll copy this and then we'll create a modifier. Modifier, call it not stop. And then paste the code and then say require live with the error message not live. And also emits an event called cage. So let's rename this event. I'll take this event that's declared inside the gem join contract and then paste it here. And then we'll rename it to stop. Okay, what's next? Let's rename some of the parameters that goes inside the constructor. I'll rename this bat to underscore CDP engine. I'll rename ILK to underscore collateral type, and then gem to underscore gem. I also noticed that it emits the rely event. This is an event that is emitted when authorization is set. So let's remove this and then paste it inside the alt contract. 
I'll copy this grant authorization and we'll grant authorization for a message dot sender. Remove the public from the constructor. And that completes the constructor. We have a function to stop this gem join contract, which only an authorized account can call. And then we have two more functions to go, join and then exit. The join function will take in two inputs, the user to allocate collateral for, and then we have a uint called web, basically the amount of collateral to lock. In MakerDAO, there are units for different amounts. In MakerDAO, WAD is equal to 1E18, and we also have Ray, which is equal to 1E27, and then finally we have RAD, which is 1E45. So what this function join does is it will transfer the tokens from message.sender into this contract for the amount WAD, and WAD has 18 decimals. And before it does that, it's going to call the CDP engine and call a function called slip. What it does is modify the collateral balance identified by the collateral type for the user for the amount wed. Okay, so let's start by removing this require lib is equal to one. Since we created a modifier inside a circuit breaker called not stopped. Okay, so we can now remove this. Now, since the function slip, Let's rename this first. Let's rename this to modify collateral balance. And I'll do the same for the interface and over here as well. So the function modify collateral balance will modify the collateral balance identified by the collateral type for the user and for this much amount. Now notice that it takes in an int. This is because collateral balance can either increment or decrease. When we call the function join, it's going to increase the collateral balance. So we shouldn't be putting in a uint amount that is too large. We can check that this uint amount still fits inside the int by casting it into int and checking that it is greater than or equal to zero. So I'll change this error message to overflow. And then it's going to call the function modify collateral balance. Next, it's going to transfer the collateral from message sender into this contract for the amount wed. Since transfer from returns a boolean, it checks that this boolean is equal to true. Otherwise, let's say transfer failed and then emit the event join. Okay, so that's the function join. It's a function to put in collateral into the MakerDAO stablecoin system and then record that into the CDP engine. Next is the function exit. This will be the opposite of calling a function join. It would transfer the collateral back to the user and then also record that this collateral was sent back to the user inside the CDP engine. The function exit takes in two inputs, the user to send the collateral back to and the amount of collateral to free up from the CDP engine. And again, for the amount it is using red, which has 18 zeros. The first thing that it does is it checks that this red amount will not overflow when it is casted into int 256. I'll change the error message to overflow. And it says that this red amount must be less than or equal to 2 to the 255. This is because when we cast UN256 into int256, the very last bit, the 256 bit, is used to store the sign, either positive or negative, when it is converted into int. And to make sure that this stays positive when it is casted into int, this last bit must be a zero. So this is why it's checking that this red is less than or equal to 2 raised to the 255. Next, it calls the function CDP engine modify collateral balance for the collateral type for the message sender and for the amount minus wed. So what it's doing here is it's telling the CDP engine to deduct this much amount of collateral from message sender. And the collateral is identified by collateral type. Once the collateral has been removed from the CDP engine, again, remember that the actual collateral is locked inside this gem join contract. It will call gem transfer transfer to the user for the amount wet. Again, the function transfer for ERC20 returns a boolean, so it makes sure that it returns true. Let's change this message to failed transfer, and then emits the event exit. Okay, let's try compiling a contract. Inside the terminal, I'll type forge build. Okay, and I see a first there on line 76. I'll need to declare that decimals returns a uint 8. Okay, let's try compiling again. Okay, and our contract compiled successfully. 
Okay, so that completes the contract gem join.